All right, hello. This is Bill Kaiser again. So today I'm going to be kind of talking about skill division in general and why I've been playing it a lot more than well the new Paradox game that came out. To be honest, I mean I bought both these games to pre-order them, one to get in the beta, one to actually play the game when on release, and I didn't expect that the Paradox game would be played a lot less like at all. This is um, kind of unprecedented for me personally because just well I got about 1,500 or more plus hours in like Hearts of Iron 4 hundreds of hours in EU 4 maybe a little less than 100 hours of Vicky 2 and hundreds of hours of, with my friends in Stellaris and everything. It's just it's a very strange experience and I just, I was, I was alright with the war game series. I, uh, I, I liked the, uh, the mechanics and ruse and everything and all those games that Eugene has made. But I just, I was never like a super fan. I mean, sure, I do have all the DLC for Red Dragon, but it's just, um, I liked the campaign more or less in those games and I just I couldn't really play the previous ones for having not the same like strategic map campaigns you know like European Escalation I mean obviously like the story is good but because it's like a good little what if alternate history scenario but right it, it's just a step downwards because you don't have uh you know jet planes to deal with and stuff and yeah, I, I just... Hmm. It's just kind of surprising how I... I'm not that super much of a Paradox fan, I suppose. Like I used to be. But it's just... I don't understand what happened. On the other hand, this game is fucking amazing. Everything about it, just it's it's a straight improvement from Steel Division. And I'm just I'm so thankful for that. And I just I, I cannot stress this enough. You got like you got the terrain, which is taken into account when it comes to like the height. And for like you know the sight range and stuff and you also have um, you have the light forest you have the well everything in millimeters when it comes to penetration values and and the armor and the the fact that you have like you know commander that'll give bonuses to the uh, you know the rifle leaders and the tank leaders and stuff and you can like make form little platoons and stuff and all that which I personally really like because I tend to do that by accident in a lot of games I play anyway. Just because, you know, a, a group of maybe like, you know, obviously two Wolverines. A lot better than, well, one Wolverine. Obviously. And yeah, it's just... It makes me kind of sad because it's just like, I was really looking forward to Imperator, but... Yeah, I... Hmm... I don't really know what to say about this. It just makes no sense to me. Oh well, I guess. I mean, hopefully in the future it's better, but as the game is now, it's terrible. It's just, it's not a good game. But this game... It shows a lot of promise. And by a lot of promise, I literally mean everything is just a straight fucking... Just a straight upgrade. And a single player, I'm really hoping that they don't fuck this up. Because they... It is just... It looks very promising. It literally looks like Total War in World War II. And honestly, as a Total War fan... Well, former Total War fan. I'm a former fan of a lot of things, apparently, but... There's just a lot of promise in that, and I just, I cannot 
wait to like actually get my hands on that. And before I get too distracted, I should probably actually start this game. But I want to be a little careful here. Also, I like how the Strelik is a, uh, a PTRD anti-tank rifle. That's always nice. Give him a little infantry later also. And maybe an assault squad to help them over in the forest here. Now, I really should have gave them commands. But silly old me didn't want to seem to do that. Also, oh my god, you got all command tanks. What is wrong with you? And of course they're all coming from that direction. Oh well, I'll just have to deal with this anyway. could I say about the state of strategy games in general well I, d I don't think it really looks that bright I mean if uh, I I'm just really hopeful that this game does well because it I think it deserves it I mean, sure, there's bugs here and there, and I wouldn't. I don't know if I would recommend to most people to pre-order this, but it's still really nice. So it's it, it's got to be worth something. Anyway, this uh, these whole situations they just. They really depress me. It, it's just, it's flat out unacceptable that some of these games coming out, they just, they're so unpolished that it just, it's not even funny. It just, it just needs to stop. Ah. <sighs> Anyway, sorry for being so depressing, but, you know, it's just, it's unacceptable. Anyway, there's, uh, there's a lot of good things you can say about this game, mostly down, coming down to the fact that it's just a good real-time strategy game. Just in general. And as a fan of RTSs from, well, since forever to be honest. My favorite, like, RTS kind of growing up in, or like, middle, like, high schools, like, uh, called Men of War. And, uh, well, I got a little, little, uh, proficient in the gem engine. Let's just say that. So just all the custom map making was half the fun of that game. And honestly, the only thing that I would ever want in this is just better modding tools. Also, the uh, somewhat more variety of the fortification mechanics. You know, like minefields, tank traps, tank ditches, uh, you know, tank barricade, or the barricades inside of, like, let's say, I've mentioned this before, but let's say you have this town. Let's say there's a lot more of an urban area. 
you uh, put some barricades on the streets or something, so that way infantry can't get there through there as easily. But the problem is that infantry kind of teleport from house to house anyway. So mm, you could probably fiddle around with that, but it could impede them a little bit, kind of like barbed wire. Except specifically for roads inside of, like, towns. Because there was, like, a bunch of, like, wooden logs and stakes and stuff for, you know, infantry obstacles for that. Especially in, like, the Battle of Berlin and stuff and, and all that. And I'm sure in, like, a lot of other areas, but, you know. Oh, man. But, yeah, there's just, there's so much you can do with this. That it's not even funny. And this would just be... It's the ideal foundation to have expansions that could completely change the game here. And... I do mean every word by this when I say that. This game is just flat out... It's gorgeous, for one. It's just... I mean, sure, when you go in extremely and the faces look like, you know, Rome Total War on release, but, you know, Rome Total War 2 Total War, where the, you know, those ghoulish faces. But it's not a bad thing because you don't really zoom in that much unless you literally want to see those pretty ass models. And. I made a bad decision for my assault infantry, didn't I? Where are my assault troops? Is that you? Hmm. Hmm. Either way... Get this game. Just just flat out. Just get this game. Anyway. The, uh... I will say that the Soviets are probably the most fun nation I've played in this entire beta, really. They're new, they're fresh, they're really good at close range combat. Especially with the infantry. Like, sure, you have to get in extremely close, but... That's okay. Uh, let's see, probably should get some tanks. I also do like the wide open areas of these maps. And I'm not sure who the heck died there. Oh, it was the it was the uh, Valentine. They got something over here. Oh, it's the Panzer 3. Everything all makes sense now. Can you hit him? No, you can't. Maybe I should just go into the cover here. Anti-tank guns. Uh, I could get an M10. Perfect. Ooh. That's bad. Oh, well, anyway, I probably should go after these men. 
Do I have anything to counter this? Indeed, I do not. Now, let's see here. So, probably the best thing that I have had about this game so far is the fact that the scale feels right. Everything just makes sense. And it's just, it's really nice. I'm, I'm extremely glad that I got this. And I can't believe it's just, ugh. Everything just makes sense. Ugh. Now the bugs, though. I've seen a lot of really tome fool foolery in this game where there's... Let's say you got some artillery pieces right here. That little guy is just going to be spinning in circles trying to find how to aim his fucking gun for probably two minutes. And I wish I caught this stuff on footage. I'll bring in the mortars to see if they do it. But anyway, it's just... I don't want to say it's pathetic, but it's just, it is quite annoying. I don't want to diss this game too much, but it's just, come on, man. Throw me a bone here. Also, the C-34 is probably dead. On the bright side, Panzer IV is down. And this is going to be a nice little explosion for me. Good job. I don't trust this infantry. Even though I know they don't have any tank weapons, but... It's a good precaution. Also, these anti-tank rifles are actually really fun to use. What else could they potentially add to this game? Hmm. Possibly, and I do mean possibly, uh, a lot of like SS units that were made up of foreign soldiers. The problem with that though is that there's so many of them and they're so small and, and few and far between that it's just probably wouldn't be that worth it. But I've been reading a lot about them and it's just. They, they seem like they'd be really interesting to have. Like, you know, like the British... Like the British fucking... The, the British fascists that were conscripted. Now... There weren't very many of them. Like, at all. Just, just period. But, uh... It'd just be interesting to see them. And that was a nice little rocket to launch there. Ooh! More! Yes! Feed my bazooka! Oh, the side squirts actually might be a problem if this game was modeled correctly. We're gonna watch this happen. I, okay, good. The game didn't crash. <laughs> oh, that was cool. Yes. It's too bad I was in the forest. Da torre vires capitan. Can bazookas destroy bunkers? How many do you have? Oh, no, you don't have enough. Get back here. 
Get the half track up. I don't know why you're all the way back here, but that's all right. All right. I'm going to bring up a bunch of infantry here just to show you how epic these assaults can be. Of Takamakachi. Of I can't say the name, but it's a nice Russian word. I need some riflemen. Close enough. All right. Do not fail me. And you're out of range. You have failed me. I really should have put those mortars like right here or something. Oh well. We'll be waiting for them all game. Uh, I do see what people think about, like, the front line, though. Like, instead of making it so there's a front line pushed by units, maybe it could be about the objectives themselves instead. Because that makes sense. That way you can still have, like, your, you know, your cheeky little flanks. If you have, as long as you have, like, a unit inside the captured, like, area, then, yeah. That would make sense. And also, why is there more interesting stuff going on when I'm not in control? Like, look at this. They got, like, everything is telling a story right here. There's destroyed equipment. And they have a... You see, they're, they're using their mechanized efficiently. And look at all these trucks. Oh, boy. In these guys half tracks, I suppose. Also, I like the attention to detail of how some of them didn't have helmets. Where are the Studebakers? Oh, I guess they're all the mechanized units here. Oh well, that's good. I need mechanized anyway. Too bad the trucks disappear. Alright, let's do this. This is going to be everything you see in the movies. A mass assault. You can hit that. Sonderkraftzeug, if that's how you say it. And I'm sure German, this German guy I know would probably correct me. Alright, let's see here. Yeah, you move up. Also, you're damn right, I'm going to use all this infantry. Look at how amazing this looks, by the way. Like, look at all that infantry. How many of you guys are pinned down, actually? Not you, not you, and not you. Probably should give these guys individual orders, to be honest, but...
Well, anyway, this game is great. I'm happy with it in just about every way. With the exception of bugs, which can... they can be fixed. Which, uh, compared to the last beta test, it seems like I've noticed a few less bugs. Which is... extremely thankful. Just I, I'm, I'm so thankful for this in every single way. Because it just, like, sometimes there'd be, like, texture glitches and stuff like that in the, uh, third beta test and all that. And just it as... Yeah, it really kind of, it wasn't as fun. But yes, all of my infantry got wiped out. Kind of sad about that. Well, it looks like my mortars are ready. For some reason, my troop morale is good. It's really strange, but, you know. Yeah, you go in that house, maybe you can actually hit that. Also, why are you... Watch this truck get destroyed. Because I bet these guys have, like, Panzer Shreks or something. Now, I am glad that he's here, but I I really wish you weren't for this. Just this specifically. Whew. So... I didn't really see any explode. Okay, that's why. I gotta tell them to do that again. Well, let's see if they constantly do this. Thankfully, they aren't turning around in circles, so. Um, I'm not sure if that was fixed. All the footage that I have on my channel is from this beta test. I wonder if mortars actually can knock out a bunker. Well, what do you know? That was great, actually. Then, well, another thing about this game is that, well, look at it, it's, it's just like it from Ruse. Isn't that just amazing? Why it's so pretty? Just the fact that there's just I don't even know. It just it looks nice. I'm glad it exists. When you zoom in, of course, it's just like the, all the other games where Yeah. That's alright though. Also, holy, they're really pushing hard. Might be why we kind of lost steam here, but, you know, that's alright. Hmm. Let's watch him in free tree combat here.
Oh, looks like we have a draw. Interesting. Well, seems like I got a lot, a lot of losses, but we also did a number on them, so that's all right. That Valentine did a lot of damage, though. All these Valentines did. So like one T thirty four that actually did a lot, a lot of good for me, really. Guess if it wasn't for that, uh, that IS, it would have, uh, they probably would have did a lot better, but. That's okay. Well, either way, I'm happy with this game. I, I hope to see this actually succeed because Eugen needs all the help he can get. And it, well, I, I don't see there being another war game or anything if this game fails. And that would be a really sad deal because there would be, I mean, there's still a pretty nice market for the, uh, for the war game series. There's a lot of really loyal fans that would love to see some of the features in this game be put into a, a new hypothetical war game where, uh, but this time do not focus on the 1970s and, and 80s. Maybe kind of do a, well, 19, well, very end of the 1940s, maybe to the 60s. Maybe like a Korean War, not the second Korean War, like in the hypothetical one, but you know, in the uh, campaign for Red Dragon, but I mean like an actual Korean War game, since uh, this whole, the peace breaking out in Korea actually might happen. So it'd be nice to kind of like, maybe have a campaign for both sides. Maybe don't be too hard on the North Koreans, otherwise they'll get a little pissy probably, but... I mean, on both sides, there was... I mean, obviously the North Koreans were bad. Just flat out. But they'd be an interesting like prote like antagonist to play as. Same with the Chinese and the uh, the UN peacekeeping missions, uh, mission people, and, well, I guess the, the United Nations coalition, I should say. Not really peacekeeping, but... Yeah. Because you got, you got all these countries. You got... Well, at the time, still, the British Empire, technically. You got the French. Were the French in there? I'm not sure. Probably. Either way, you got the Anzacs, you got the Canadians, you got the Americans, the... Well, you got a, quite a, little, a lot of old people there, but I completely forget a lot of them. And then there's also the fact that you can... Well, I suppose there's also, like, the the Soviet volunteer group forces, including, like, you know, the pilots that were in the MiGs. So that way you have, like, the mechanic where you have them, you can call them in, and you'll have, like, some extremely experienced uh, fighter pilots. But you, uh, you lose, like, you know, political points for calling in more units if one of them goes over, you know, um, you know, dies under, or gets shot down and under, um over enemy territory nice little mechanic there but uh yeah I guess that's all my thoughts for now I I'm really glad we're to see where this game is going and hopefully everything is polished by release but so far it looks okay I mean sure we haven't seen King Tigers or a lot of other units that the Soviets probably fielded that we just we simply don't see right now, but Oh yeah, and also the Hungarian division, we haven't seen that yet. I am extremely excited to see that actually. I wanna see those Tarans. And uh those Hungarian planes with alongside them. Also they had a lot of interesting small arm designs. Some of them look straight out of World War One to be honest, but I, I like that the World War One aesthetic anyway. Oh well, um, I'm probably gonna do a lot more Steel Division content. I might do like a Let's Play or, or something on the campaign, uh, as both sides to be honest, because I just I'm having way too much fun as the Germans and the Soviets. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Pillow Kaiser out.